all those moments down the stretch, it seemed like you were able to hit clutch shots over and over and let the guys around you. But that was the idea. You can't swing out a punch at anybody, can you? You can send the message that I'm all right. I know what I'm doing and let the other guy worry about it. Wow. wow. So, yeah, yeah. You're just doing the best you can all the time. Excuse me. Do you know your practice swing is nothing like your real swing? <laughs> oh. So I picked the balls up the left. <laughs> Obviously, in the playoffs, you have to react, don't you? If somebody hits a great shot, you better step up and, and match it. Every single shot is different. And boom. And I finally won. Okay, Sir Nick, so we just got through the uh, Ryder Cup. 1977 first Ryder Cup. Beat Jack Nicholas. Uh, Tom Watson, we said we had on there. So, post-Ryder Cup, let's kind of work from there into when you get with Ledbetter and do the swing changes, yeah. right? A couple of years have gone by. So from 77 till kind of early well, 80s. A lot, a lot had gone by, really. Because um, I won uh, I won our order of merit in 83 when I won five tournaments. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so now I was, I was, gosh, you've gone through a lot there. 78, I won our, my first event, the, the PGA at Burtdale. Great place to win. Um, you know, I played other Ryder Cups, 79 in in um, Greenbra, and then 81 was the the one at um, uh, uh, Walton Heath when we got hammered by the best, probably the best team ever in America. You know, they I think they had 11 out of the 12 guys were major champions or about to be. Wow. And, yeah, and so, and then we were 83 was huge. For the Ryder Cup, if we're talking Ryder Cup, 83 was very important. That was when we lost by just a point at Palm Beach Gardens. And that was the whole turnaround of the Ryder Cup. Um, and then 85, we won there, you know, at uh, the Belfry. And then 87. So, but, but right in that period, so I, yeah, I won, I won our Order of Merit. And then, um, then the next year, 84, I won at Hilton Head, my first win in America. Mm. But by the end of the year, I was, but I'd blown the Open. I was leading, I was leading the Birkdale Open in 83 with nine to go and blew up and that sort of thing. And then that started this, sowing the seeds that, you know, have I got it or not? Whether well, I thought I didn't have it, wasn't good enough. And so that's when I embarked, I met David, down in South Africa, end of 84, when we used to play the Sun City and thought about it. And then by the time, and then we were at Muirfield Village. So what's that, May, June of um, 85, and he was there and I missed the cut. Couldn't hit my hat and said, right, I'm ready. Let's start working on the swing, which was, you know, it, in hindsight, mid-season, flat out, stupid, 100%. <laughs> Stupidly, stupidly stupid, you know, because you know I'm learning a backswing with an old, a new backswing with an old follow through. I mean, give me, give me a break. So my game went wallop like that, and you know, and it was a tough time. You're getting media, you know, all that sort of thing, all the negativity around it, and um, you know, I was. And it went on and on and on and on. It wasn't like, you know, I thought it would be a quicker fix. So 85, you know, and I played the Ryder Cup. Tony Jackson selected me and I couldn't hit my hat. So I actually, I actually said to him after day one, well, no, don't, don't pick me again until the singles because I just couldn't play. And I lost, so I had a terrible Ryder Cup there. And then, um, 86, luckily, or a bit of a blur, I can't remember. Just, you know, I just, I just was practicing so hard, trying different things, go and see David, he'd come and see me, that sort of thing. And really, you know, it didn't click until um, spring of 87. Actually, you know, right opposite the Masters. I, I wasn't in the Masters in 87. I, I played at Hattiesburg, you know, their B Tour events, whatever they were even called then. And and play great. I shot four sixty sevens and finished second, and that's when my game clicked. And finally, after all that work, I go. I forgot some trust, and then I I won in 
Spain. Went down to the Spanish Open. I won that. And and now we were on the road to the Open. You know, and then, then, then it was Muirfield coming up. We went to Glen Eagles a week before and I was hitting the ball great. And I and back at those, I used to really use the week before as a real prep. Mm. Um, you know, the turf was great. You're hitting off fescue grass so you, you get the real good feel. And I was deliberately, you know, if it was a six iron, I'd grab a five iron and I would force myself to swim. You know, give it the old Sam's need swing, give it a nice bit of tempo. And so I left there feeling really good and then went to Muirfield and um, hey, you know, the, the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> as you're working with David and you're doing the swing changes, I assume at points in there, or like, were there points where you're like, hey, I, I maybe Matt like did a bad choice here? No, no I, was, I was amazed. I mean, it, I never, um, I never doubted what I was doing. I just kept plowing on. I never got, you know, I never thought, oh, I'm going to throw the towel in or anything. Mm. Just kept doing it, kept pushing. But, it, you know, it was it was brutal because I used to hit so many balls. I'd go down and practice, think of something, go down and practice. I used to go down to Wentworth like five times in a day. You come home, think of something, I'd go back, hit some more and that sort of thing. And I used to have some funny things. So, <laughs> so I went down to Wentworth one day and I you know, tipped the balls out, you know, hitting them yourself. And honestly, I hit four or five irons. This, no, this gentleman came up to me first. He said, do you mind if I watch? So I won't say anything. I said, yeah, fine, of course you can. Yeah. So honest as I sit here, I have four or five irons, and they were literally all four corners of a yard. Wow. Right? Mm. It went, don't, don't, honest. It's true. Like that. And I stood back, and I had a practice swing, and I went to hit the next one, and he said, excuse me, do you know your practice swing is nothing like your real swing? That's <laughs> 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 so I picked the balls up and left. <laughs> I went hours out of there. So uh, that was one of them. Um, but, you know, I got And then I used to go to, David was at Greenleaf, so I used to fly into Orlando and, and go down there. And, you know, in September in the, in the jungle, it's bloody hot, you know, yeah. beating balls. And I used to hit the big buckets. He said five of the big buckets, 1,500 <laughs> balls. Not the little buckets, the big buckets. Wow. And they were hard balls as well. They were probably old, whatever it was then, uh, some crunchy blooming ball. And um, put the work in. I, I used to hit so many balls I couldn't close my hands. I'd be like that. Ah, you know, like that. Yeah. So, so, you know, it was, it was when it finally clicked. I mean, that was the, that was the workload I felt. I, I did it the old fashioned way. Hit it, beat it out of the dirt. And what, what were some of the things mechanically you guys were doing with the swing? Like, what were the changes? Yeah, so I was a, I had the big lag swing. You know, I'm taller, you know, I had the 70s lag swing where this was going like that. And then, and then big leg action. And, you know, I, Ian Collin used to get to the top of the backswing and say legs. So the legs used to really go. So I had this kind of look. And then my tempo, big hands and all that kind of saved it. So I was big high big high finish so golf ball did exactly that went whoosh, like this all the time especially the old balloon old, ball. Old, yeah. you know the old tight list used to go just go low and, oh, and then yeah. climb and then I, and I realized a lot of guys could hit it more on that you know and keep the penetration going so it it was like well how do we learn body rotation we have arm rotation first that was the first feeling I, I was feeling like I was pointing the club like there right behind me mm. to get some rotation so arm rotation and then timing it with the body. So if, if you're doing that and you're too fast here, you've got no chance yeah, because it. I'm afraid to think. And so it was then learning that the body works actually more like a piston. The body's going to go like this, whereas the arms are rotating, you know, and then finally get it into a slot here, differently rather than finishing up here, down here, which feels incredible. I felt like my hands were like below my shoulders, mm. which are not, obviously it was still up here. Um, so putting all that together, but it wasn't until I, you know, um, it wasn't until it really clicked what to do with the right hand, you know, and how to really, so we used to do a, used to do a set and a double set, I used to call it, I used to set it and then he's, and crank it, really set it to be able to hang on to this angle here. That was, that ended up being one of my real secrets, being able oh. to hit a goal. I, I remember when, in France, I hit a bad shot, 
the French Open, cost me the tournament. And I stood there and I vowed that if I could get impact like that all the time, and I did, you know, I then said, right, that's it. And I got, and I went to Ireland and there was a telegraph pole in the middle of the practice ground. It was just perfect. And I just hit every, every ball off this telegraph pole, a little tiny fade. But because of that, hang on to the angle. Yeah. And once I could do that, that was a really big difference, you know. So that was the, the start of it, you know. So that was the, you know, and as we t and having, then having different shots and having safety shots, that sort of thing. Um, but um, trying to think, you know, my iron shots through 1990, 89 but the Masters, and then night. And then I went back and defended, didn't I? Yeah. And then my iron shots through 1990 were really good. I just had the great, had very good rotation in my forearms. You know, I could really feel, I could rotate it and control the club face. That was what was so good. So you could, you could really trap the golf ball. Yeah. Really got a really great crunch out of it. Really was a great strike and a, so if I was doing that all the time, so it's, it's kind of a weird thing. It's, um, we should say get speed in your elbows. Mm. Funny feeling, you know, you, you can get, whew. so I used to kind of work on that. And then, and what we were talking about before, and then get the body to, the body rotates the same each time. Then you got, you got a real good chance that the arms are going to follow. Mm. I was, I was more that. It's interesting when we're talking with Rick Smith about, you know, Jack was, hands yeah, control whether he was really doing that you know right. this is this this is a terrible this is a crazy like i'm sure when i explain a feeling some people go mm. yeah but that's his feeling um <laughs> where what's really happening mm. might not be it's the case but i definitely felt being a tall guy that the better this worked i felt being connected then that kind of makes sense mm. if the body really turns really well then the arms stay on stay on plane as soon as it is we know as soon as the body or the spine angle changes well obviously look what's happening with the arms so much and i think that's what i was so good at yeah. i could literally turn turn my body and the arms followed and that's why i got into a groove of being able to keep and i hit a lot of, and i did that intentionally you know i hit a lot of balls with you know one two and three irons so i could churn it out like that we, we talked about earlier about you you made one little comment that we didn't go down when when we we interviewed Rick Smith about uh, Phil. He said he you know he didn't have strategy and it's yeah. a strategy change. Did you when you went through that period and came back and then went on the tear? Did this is a lot of mechanical changes that oh, happened? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you also have strategy changes? Was there a new approach? Would, yeah. Um, well, I was a big believer. It's funny. I I'm sure I said it as, as, to myself as a kid. The big priority is hitting fairway, right? And I wasn't worried about that was more important than distance and so that sets a that sets a strategy up straight away doesn't it and i was never afraid that if i'm hitting going to hit a three wood and a six iron and the other guys hit a driving a wedge so what i'll let my mm. six iron inside his wedge i mean that was kind of my mat that's mat. eric Agorno strategy. That, that, that was my attitude yeah. so i was a rig big believer you get it on the short grass that's a huge difference mm -hmm. and then just be really good and um you know, and just learning shot making. You know, we should. I should have jumped on Rick again with uh, Jack talking about Jack tipped the golf ball. So I played with Jack in 1983 in at uh, Torrey Pines. Jack shot 63. I shot 71. My 71 felt like 81. And I came in. And I thought, how did he do it? That was a piece of cake. Hmm. And I, and then I dawned on him. And I, you know, when you talk to him, I said, so. What do you do? He says, well, I aim in the middle of green. If the flag's on the left, I tip it to the left. And if the flag's on the right, I tip it to the right. Mm. Like, Duh. Light bulb. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, because, and he says, so if I, if I do it perfectly, it's there. If I overdo it, it's right edge of the green. If I don't do it, it's in the middle of the green. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, thanks, Jack. It's, <laughs> you know, so, and I, after that day, I then, when I really started working on that, if you're good enough to do that, can you aim in the middle of the green and just tip it left and right? Yeah. And that's what I did. That's what I did on the range. Mm. Through 89, I never, you know, I would hit 
it was fun because you get in a rhythm and you, you hit it. Every single shot was different. I'd hit a fade and then a draw. Fade mm. and a draw. I did that through the whole bag. Every ball was doing a little bit of this. And so when you take that on the golf course, if you've really got it going, it doesn't, when they put the pin tuck around the corner and the other guy can't, you know, he's got a fade on and he fades it 30 feet, you just tip it around the corners you're 15 feet back to my 15 foot circuit. It was all about how do you, what shot do you have to hit to get that ball in that 15 foot circle? Because if you're doing that plonk, plonk, plonk all day long, you've got a score already, whether you putt good or not. You see, you're not going to shoot a 74. Mm. You can't, it's impossible. Mm. You're going to, you, you're going to be under par all the time. So that was the, yeah, that was all I was trying to do. And I got, as I said, I got good enough to do that with any club in the bag. So let's go back to 87. First, first open victory, Muirfield. Yeah. Conditions are testy. I know you and uh, a young Paul Azinger were uh, close to the lead there. Yeah, yeah. 18 pars in a row, yeah, right? The famous good. 18 in a row. Yeah, yeah. When you're playing in that tournament, are you actively, when you're playing still like heavily with your swing feels? Yeah, yeah, I was. Because, you know, we, we'd worked the week before, as I said, at, Glen Eagles, so I must have been working on some, you know, use, actually it was pretty simple, you know, you've heard me say that, I mean, I would, I got it down to, you know, thumbs up, thumbs up. Mm. Yeah, if I, if I can get this thumb in to here, at this angle, and I get the thumb through here, it was a little bit different, but, you know, if, if you get it down to a nice, simple thought, nice bit of tempo, and, you know, it was really rough weather, typical Scottish pea soup, so, you know, again, our ball striking and consistency was, was going to, was the way to do it. And um, that final day was, was brutal because it, you know, the, the fog and mist came in. Golf ball was going nowhere. I mean, absolutely nowhere. I mean, it, um, a lot of holes you were hitting, five, fours and threes, irons into the greens. Par threes were all, gosh, the par threes were three irons and two irons, you know. That three I, watch that that three that's your I, favorite that's, club. That's not bad for you. I had three yeah. iron into seven, I think, and I hit a two iron into 16. I had 187 yards and I hit a two iron. Went 182. I mean, it was just, and came up at 17, and the cross bunkers were 200 yards out, and I had a brassy, you know, two wood in those days, and I thought, brassy. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can get this thing 200 yards through the air. How about that? And so I hit a five iron in front of him and then a five iron onto the green for my third, <laughs> about the par five. And then came up the last and had a, and then uh, that was funny because I had a, I should have hit a four iron, but I didn't like it. I, I thought, God, maybe because I just hit a five iron, you know, I thought I'll, I'll try and smash a five iron and it came up short. I hit it good, but it stuck on the front of the green. And then I, um, I hit my first putt about that far wide, mm -hmm. about five foot wide. But then it's funny then, but then I, I looked at the leaderboard and I, and I was there at five and Roger Davis was at, at four. And I, I guess Zinger must have been at, and um, I said, oh no, well Davis was in at four and I'm at five. And I said, well, you've got to hold it. You've got no yeah. choice. If you want to win, you've got to hold it. So that was kind of like, and I did. You know, and then Zinger came to last and took five at the last and boom. And I finally won. <laughs> so you make the putt on 18, Zinger comes in. Yeah. I think he I think he's at six, you're at five. He, I think he bogeys he bogeyed last two, I think. So he think. are you watching from behind the green after No, I, yeah, I went in I went into the I was I went in the scorer's tent and then there was another room to the side and I sat in there between the two TVs. there was two TVs there. My little daughter, Natalie, was only this big. Um, and she, she was climbing up TV, so, you know, up, and I didn't, and I couldn't watch. I just put my head like this. <laughs> and I sat, and I just listened. And, I, and then I remember Peter Ellis saying, well, this, this putt's gonna change one of these young men's lives or something. <laughs> and Zinger missed it, boom, for a part, and that was it, bang. Um, what does that feel like? First yeah, major, I mean, I can feel it right now. I'm feel, I'm like feeling out. my hair is <laughs> it up just thinking only, about it. The what? kid running around. Yeah, yeah. there's one, around. one word, relief, relief. That's all it is. Yeah, I mean, you worked that hard. Wow. Just it was just relief. I finally done. That was a goal. As we said, that was a goal. 
and I finally done it. Simple as that. Gosh. And that was that was the. Then after that, you then you're walking on, then you're definitely walking on cloud nine for about a month. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I could go open champion, open champion. <laughs> I did. I did for a month. Walking every single step. Open can you champion. Imagine? I said it for no, a month. No, I can't imagine. I said oh, it for a month. I can't imagine. Yeah, it was funny. So we get through 87. We win the first, we win the first. Yeah, uh, we. This we. is a we yeah, thing. Remember, this is we're in this together. And then we go to 88. Close call at the US Open. Yeah. Right? Curtis Strange. And then 89, first Masters. Yeah, that was that was interesting because I, I, I'm now in America, you know, I'm playing a lot. I played a lot of the West Coast swing and all that. And I was playing really well and I kept and I kept screwing up every week. So it's you know, I haven't had a I haven't had a result. Um and um so it's quite funny with my Jack story was, you know, he was on a putting green and we were just putting around together and he said, you know, how you been doing? I said, exactly that. I said, yeah, I'm playing all right. But I keep screwing up. And then and I said to him, uh, I don't know whether to make it happen or let it happen. Mm. And Jack goes, <laughs> he's got, yeah, and I know, I know what you mean. And uh, I just walked away. And I'm like, well, which one is? What's the solution? Yeah. <laughs> so I say that I let it happen for the first 27 holes I'm leading. I think I'm going down the, I'm going down the 10th hole at six under and I think I'm leading by about two. And I deem I let it happen. And those, and then the next 27, I try to make it happen in the bad weather. And I'm nine over for the next 27. Sure. How about that? So I, I, I hold the record for the highest third round of the champion. I shot, <laughs> I shot 77, played with Trevino. And it was rain all day and then nothing was going right. And that sort of thing, I guess. And so, and we had to come back on we finished, you know, bad light stop play on Saturday evening. We we had to be bust in. Lee told me years like, do you remember the, the our, our evacuation van ran out of gas? We, so I think we had to walk Get or out. something. What? Anyway, so I came back the next morning, Sunday morning, and I thought, right, I had a pitch at 13 and it all worked out. I thought, great, if I finish two under for the last six, That'd be, that'd be great. And I finished two over for the last six. So nothing was, so I was really, I was actually really upset. And then, but then I somehow went back in and I looked at all the names and I thought, come on, you can still do this somehow. And, you know, that's when I, I changed putters. You know, I was, I'd been using a, and a Kushner in a bullseye because I thought everybody, you know, wins with a Kushner, but it wasn't working. That's when I had this TPA 18 sitting around just messing around on the carpet with it and I thought all right grab that thing I thought this feels a lot better and and went out first hole hit it, hit it on the front of the green and then hold it like a 50 footer I love big one footer, whoop, yeah. straight in then must I think I birdied I must have birdied two and then I birdied four so and then boom and I'm off, off and running and then and then the last three putts so the putt I hold on 16, I hold, yeah. hit it on the back edge of 16. It went, I mean, that was a 15 foot putt with 12 foot break. Uh -huh. I mean, you hit it, honestly, it was over there and in. And then 17, it was raining and I, I missed it left of the ridge, slapped it over the hill. It was going too fast, in. Yep. And then, the putt, and of course, the putt I hold on 11 in the playoff was, you know, I, I, mean, I won't never replicate those three again in my life, will I? They're unbelievable. At what point did you start to feel? Because obviously you were coming from so far back. Exactly. I think on the last day you shot sixty-five. Yeah, you followed yeah, the board. Yeah. Where are so, you at? Yeah, like, see, what's... yeah, no, you just, but you just, you, you're so kind of in it. You don't know what you're doing, and you just keep plowing it on the best you can. That's all I could do, and then it wasn't until I finally, because I finished a good forty-five minutes before. Scott Hogue, and I know he made five at 17, didn't he? He went over the back of 17. That's right. Yeah, he went over the back of 17. And then, um, yeah, and then we're in the, now we're in the playoff. It's weird. You know, I, I was just sitting around in the Bobby Jones's cabin watching TV. Didn't even warm up. 
I don't think. Bobby Jones's cabin. Yeah, and then we just went, we walked straight across the 10th, and you know, off you go, and I skied it off the 10th, and on some stuck on top of the hill and had a four iron in, and actually it was a good shot, because, you know, from that angle, you know, the flags there and the bunkers are there. Yeah. So it was only 10 foot offline, but went in the bunker. I had, didn't have a very good bunker show, it was very wet sand. And then, as you know, the, the, the wacky bit was if, um, well, Scott Hope putted first. If he'd said, I'll finish, I would have probably said, fine, you yeah. know. If he'd knocked it two foot behind and said, I'll finish and knock it in, then I'm putting and I missed that you could have won. So we all know. And then he, and then, so I've taken five, he's got this, and it's a horrible putt. You know, it's a little, because if you hit it on the left edge too hard, which is exactly what he did, it's gone. So I, you know, but honestly, the weirdest, the weirdest thing was I went on the side of the green and I said, do you know what, I can still win this. And I said, but it doesn't look very good right now. <laughs> so, and then, and then 11, 11 was magical. I hit it, I hit it right off the tee and, and I had three iron in the, murky weather it was gray and dark and i nailed it obviously and it, i saw it turn and i thought oh that's all right and i honestly couldn't see it until i was 60 70 yards from the green you know it was that dark and and he was way over and he chipped up and i was and honestly i was panicked i thought i am i haven't got the balls to say i'm not going on i mean it, it was dark you couldn't go play 12. You wouldn't, you couldn't see the blooming green. It's up to you guys. I mean, you're making, well, I don't know if, no, it, right. if they said, if the, what if the official said, carry on and you could have gone, hang on a minute. I, but right. You, Augusta, you're going to tell Gus, no, I think we go to Monday. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Luck. So, um, I don't know if that helped me or not, but, um, so the funny, the funny bit was, I mean, Andy Proger, my caddy from Watford came down. And I said, what do you think, Proj? He goes, well, it all looks a bit of a blur to me, Gov. <laughs> <laughs> Honest. So I said, all right, you, you, you go and hang on to that thing. And I, you know, and I was gripping that putt out. I was squeezing the blood out. I said, come on, let go, let go, relax. I just, and, then, and my putting stroke was really technical. It was left, right. <laughs> right, and I just went technical. left, right. And I went, and it went in, and that was it. In the hole is the famous pose. That was it. Well, I couldn't believe it. It was just whoosh, it right up a drain pipe. It was, and that was it. Boom. It was crazy. I was interested to hear your take on that. It was watching it back. The putt you made on 16, the putt you made on 17. Yeah, it was crazy. And then going in the playoff, all the momentum looked like he hit that good shot in the 10. You were in the bunker. Yeah. He's got the two putts, and I'm like nervous watching it. And then, uh, gosh, so clutch. It was a theme when I was watching back a lot of these wins. And I got the same thing when I would watch Tiger, and I'm for sure it was Jack the same way. All those moments down the stretch, it seemed like you were able to hit clutch shots over and over and let the guys around you kind of. Yeah, that was, well, that was the idea. You, as you know, you can't, you can't swing a, a punch at anybody, can you? But if you, can, mm. if you A, know what you're doing, or feel like you, you know what you're doing, and, you, and I, I think you got like that. You just got so engrossed in what you were doing and you, you know you've got to go for a process when you get to the bag and pick a club and all that so that's all part of it and um 13, yeah. and then yeah and then you stand up and, and nail it as best you can i mean that's and you know you never really thought about it but you know that that if you can send the message that i'm all right i know what i'm doing and let the other guy worry about it but it was you get so you're so engrossed in what you're doing you're not really our game you cannot um i mean a little bit you have to obviously in the playoffs you have to react don't you if somebody hits a great shot you better step up and, and match it yeah but but when you're playing regular 72 holes you you're just doing the best you can all the time and then and, and the guy who can churn it out the longest from Thursday to Sunday is going to be the winner. It's the winner. And then there's another, it's amazing how many parallels between you and Jack. Obviously, you watched him on TV, playing and beating him in a Ryder Cup. And then in 1990, we go back to the Masters again. Yeah. First person to defend back-to-back -back since 
Jack, Jack and, yes. and I mm. played with him, and I played with him on Sunday. So that was, yeah, that was a, well, that was amazing week because I've got now got a brand new caddy on the back, Fanny Sunison, and mm. so <laughs> who's never seen Augusta, never been to Augusta. I then learned 25 years or 30 years later, she'd never even seen Augusta on TV. Wow. wow. So yeah, yeah. So she, and she's only been on my bag, you know, we'd, for a couple of weeks. Started that year, 1990, and so, which was probably really good for me. I mean, in the end, I I deem it was because I had to, I had to coach her on what I wanted for the week. You know, yeah. when we and it, it, back in the day, you're coaching yourself, really. The poor, you know, the caddies mm -hmm. did a lot. You know, caddies aren't allowed on the golf course on their own at Augusta, so she's got the old pedometer's wheel. You know, which we used to do our yardage, just check the yardage. She's got the bag. She's got yardage, but she's got pedometers meal and she's got to look after me as well. And, and that's our practice round. So there's a lot going on. And I used to just say, and I'd be talking all the time. It was, probably, it was probably good for me. Yeah, I want to do this. Don't want to do that. Need that. Don't want that. Whatever. And, you know, we've started pretty slowish. had been on a really good day three. And... And then Sunday, Sunday we're playing with Jack. It was quite, so it's quite funny. It was, you got, you got the, back in the day when you used to announce, you know, what number ball. So I come on, hey, Jack, I'm playing a Titleist 4. And Jack goes, eh, I'm playing Titleist 4. And I went, all right, we're changed then. <laughs> so Fanny was really, she was cheesed. She, she, he should have changed. You're the defending champion. No, 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 anyway, so, anyway, so promptly. <laughs> So I hit it in the bunker, short of the green, on the green, three putt, six. Lovely. Yeah. Beautiful start. Mm. And then I said, you just better make four down the, the next mate. And I did. So that kind of cleared it up a bit. And then... Um, the goal setting. Yeah, then thing, and, and then we were just tootling along and there wasn't a lot. And I made a great three at 12. That was, you know, I was plugged in the back bunk and I made this amazing three. And then, then it probably all happened after that. I think, you know, I hit a great shot into 14 birdied that one, birdie 16, you know, and get in and Floyd made that same mistake. He hit it left of the ridge at 17 and three putted it, which was very doable. It was like, you know, over there. And and then here we go down the Blimey playoff again. And that was yeah. really weird feeling because I'm thinking, God, you know, I won it. And I was given a... Um, they made the 11th hole the official poster for the year and the artist had given me the cop signed copy and I'm thinking, yeah, I could have that on the wall where I won and where I lost. Now I'm not, you know, you, you just have mm -mm. things going through your mind. But no, you can't, you can't, you know, so, um, and um, same, skied it off 10, <laughs> four right into the green, in the bunker again. Yeah, really good bunker shot this time. The flag was back left, really good bunker shot. And then, um, so I made, par ray had a chance he had about 15 80 foot i left it short and then um and then 11 happened it was weird because there's a both drove and there's a restroom in the in the trees there so ray goes to the restroom so by the time we get there i lit i'm at the my ball and i and he walked literally to the board and i heard crunch and i went Bloody hell, he's hit it already. You see, and I saw it turn, boom, in the pond. And so I, and then you're trying to do the maths. Yeah. I, I go, so what, what can he make? What can he make? You know, we, and then you, you have to stop yourself. Go, well, you can actually still chip in from there. Right. I think it's probably the best thing you say. You can still make four. Okay, fine. So, so you've still got to hit a great shot. And I hit a little knockdown A time. And, um, and then a really good lag. And that was it. Boom. So that was uh, that was special, to, you know, to defend. I was hoping Jack, seeing that I played with him, I was hoping Jack would put the jacket on me. I thought, but they had the, but they had it all organised with the chairman. So um, that was so that you know, I'm very proud of that one to be second to Jack and then only to and Tiger, only three of us. I hope that one stays around. I don't wish it badly yeah. on anybody. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like being just the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's fascinating watching and some of those where like in 92 where you're kind of mid back nine, he's got a couple shot lead 
and you're like at that point in time you're just plugging away playing your game not worrying about what he's doing and then how eerily similar the playoffs were the same momentum with i know yeah that, those are those are freaky literally the same clubs yeah. and um nobody will ever do that that's another nobody nobody's gonna win two masters <laughs> In a back to back in a playoff, the same green eyes. So that's. Can you pretty, imagine you're just you, you're cool. replay yeah. in your head. Yeah. Even though you won, it's still the replay. Yeah, of like, yeah. can I do it again? And then, so when you win that second one too, you you lag the first putt up, you tap in. Different emotions. Oh there. yeah, a big flow. He got Fanny on the bag in tears as well. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it was uh, the whole thing is as you can imagine the. Um, you know, you live on the adrenaline. You keep storing or packing adrenaline not through the week if you're playing good, aren't you? Yeah. Every day there's a bit more adrenaline. And keep pack- and then finally when it's over, pfft, let it all. You can, seriously, you can feel it. You can actually feel it. Notice this is when you know you, when you know you, that's it. No Not more pressure. You literally your body goes wallop. You know, mm. you can feel the adrenaline drop out of you. Mm.